Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a very popular interview question. I've actually been asked this question in a phone interview. It's called encode and decode tiny URL. And it, the good thing about it is it's actually pretty easy. So it's definitely a good problem to understand in case you get asked it in a interview. So you might have heard of tiny URL. Basically, it takes a long URL and then shortens it for you. So in case, let's say you had this long leak code URL and we would actually convert it into a different URL. So instead of leakcode.com, it is now tinyurl.com. And this is basically the code that we use to decide or to map it to the original URL. So we want to be able to encode and decode, right? We're trying to do both. So we want to be able to take the original URL and then get the new short URL. And we also want to be able to take that short URL and then get the original URL from that. And other than that, there's not really any restriction of how we do this problem. So we're actually able to solve this pretty easily. So you might have already realized, right? This is not too difficult, right? Where we want to be able to convert or rather encode and decode from the original to the new one, right? So the easiest way to do that would be with a hash map, right? You probably have thought of that. We can use a hash map to map these strings and to code and decode them. So for example, we can have a hash map or an encode map. So let's say we're taking that leak code URL, right? That leak code URL, which is a string, right? We're going to take that and into that, we're going to map the shortened URL. Let's say the shortened URL is initially one rather than this uh, longer string, right? So this is a string that's just one. And now don't forget, we also want to be able to decode the new shortened string into the original string. So we want to be able to take one, which is the short string, and we want to be able to get back leak code, right? The original URL. This is all we really need to do. Now you notice I just put a one here, right? What's the algorithm we're going to decide to shorten our URLs with, right? The easiest way is just count. So for example, the first URL we're given is leak code. And we can say leak code is going to be one because it's the first URL that we're shortening. Let's say we got another call. The next URL we have to shorten, let's say, is YouTube. We can just go linearly right in order. Now YouTube is just going to map to two, right? That's just it. That's how simple it is. And every time we get a new one, for example, let's say we got Twitch or something, we would say Twitch is going to be three, right? That's the number it's going to map to, right? And you might think, well, is this good enough, right? What's the restrictions of this? Is this solution efficient and stuff? Well, yes, it's very efficient, right? You can see the conversion for encoding and decoding, since we're using a hash map, is going to be O of 1 in both cases. So this is efficient, right? But what about other restrictions, right? For example, let's say we had a big one, right? Like, let's say we want to keep our URL length or extension length 10 digits, right? You can see this one is about six digits, right? But let's say we wanted to keep it 10 digits. What's the maximum number of URLs we could shorten then if we want it to be 10 digits? Well, we would get something like this, right? Nine, 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 right? Basically 10 nines in a row. So this is 10 nines in a row. That's basically 10 billion, roughly 10 billion URLs we could shorten, right? This is not something we need to worry about, but maybe in a real interview, they'll actually ask you s stuff about this, right? Since we're only using numbers, we're doing base 10, right? So we're basically getting 10 to the power of 10. Roughly, that's how many URLs we could shorten. Let's say we were using characters and digits. We'd get maybe 62, right? Characters characters and digits, and we'd take that to the power of 10. So in this example, you can see they're actually not just using numbers, they're using characters. We could choose to use characters too, but clearly we can see 10 billion is a lot of URLs. We probably won't need to encode that many, but in case we did, we clearly see we have an even better solution if we use characters included in our tiny URL. You know, this is basically a very big number. We, we would never need more than this many encodings. But either way, we can solve this problem without even worrying about this either. 10 digits is enough probably, and we can code this up now. It's not too much code. 
So now you can see the code. This is basically, we're given a class. All we have to do is fill out these two functions, encode and decode. This is how our class is gonna be used. It's just gonna be instantiated. And then it's gonna be called, you know, we, we can you can call either of the functions, decode or encode. And we're always gonna be given valid inputs. So the first thing I wanna do is actually set up my hash map. So I'm gonna use the constructor in Python to do that. That's what I'm doing with init. So I'm gonna set up the encode map so it's initially just going to be an empty hash map and the same is going to go for the decode map it's initially just an empty hash map so we also technically need a base url i'll just call it http and tinyurl.com right and so basically we're going to append our encoded url to the end of the base every time we update our map so now let's start with the encode function. Let's say we're given a long URL. Now it's possible that the long URL has already been encoded before. So we would need to check our map to determine that. So let's check. So if not, if long URL not in encode map, if it's not already been encoded, then we're going to encode it. If it's already been encoded though, then of course we can return it we can return the encoding of that long URL, which we can get from our encode map, right? And just take it, convert it, and then return that short URL. But if we haven't done that already, we have to do that. And how are we gonna do that again? Remember, we're just gonna be taking basically, we're gonna start at one and then continue from there. So really what we're doing is taking the length of the encode map, right? every time and we're adding one to it now that's going to give us an integer but we know urls are strings so we're going to convert this integer into a string which we can do pretty easily in python and this is going to be the short url right really it's going to be the short url extension because we're adding base to this so now we have the short url right base plus that self base plus that so we have the short url now let's actually add it to our map so we can take self.encode map let me actually update that here self.encode self.encode okay so self.encode map will take the long url and assign it to the short url we're going to do the same thing for the decode map we'll take the short url and map it to the long url and with that, we actually have completed the encode function, right? That's, it's just that simple. We just need two maps and we can convert back and forth between the URLs. And the decode function now is actually even easier than that because basically we're guaranteed that this is a short URL that's already been encoded before, right? It's just for some convenient for us, they're only giving us valid input. So all we have to do is return the decoded version. So we can say self.decode map and then basically decode this short URL and then return the long URL. This is really all we have to do because we're always given a valid short URL. It's always gonna be able to be decoded. This is it. This is the entire solution. It's pretty simple. You can get more advanced with this problem. Uh, you can take a look. There's actually another problem, the system design version of this problem. And you can definitely explore more design choices than we even covered. So that might also be worth looking into. But I hope that at the very least, you understand this problem. It's very common in interviews. So hopefully you get asked this problem and you're able to pass that interview. So thanks for watching. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.